This is my first Icelandic interview, and I'm going to request my Icelandic interviewee to introduce himself and explain what he does, so that I won't be embarrassed by mispronouncing his name. Okay, um, my name is Hróbjartur Árnason, um, Robert, and I teach and research adult learning at the University of Iceland. So I lead a master's program where people both people who are working with adults and people who want to work with adults come to learn how to teach and organize, teach adults and or organize learning interventions with adults. In 10 or 15 or 20, 25 years time, do you think there'll be such a word or a phrase as adult learning? Should there be such a concept as adult learning in the sense that uh, the university needs to become more inclusive and break down its structures and allow anyone to be educated whenever they choose? Well, I think we need, we need, as educators, we need to understand the people we're working with. And basically humans learn in the same way, but then we're also all very, very different. You have different people who like to learn in different ways and uh, you have different issues and, and so all through life you know they, you you help a kindergarten kid to learn in another way than you would do with a with a with a teenager and another way than with 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 a with a senior citizen so i think all educators always have to have some ideas, some theories, some knowledge about what are people in the, the, the age group or the, the segment of society I'm working with, what are they dealing with? Why do they learn? Uh, and what do I do to motivate them and help them um, learn and advance? But do people really know what they want when it comes to learning? It's rather like people knowing what they want when it comes to consumer products, the, 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 the greatest American entrepreneur of his generation, perhaps any generation, Steve Jobs, uh, the CEO, the ex-CEO of Apple, decided what the market wanted, never asked anyone, and came up with magnificent products like this. Mm -hmm. Isn't that also true of the great teachers, that they're charismatic, that they'll come into a classroom and they'll do something extraordinary, and that the idea that people know how they learn is absurd? Mm -hmm. I, I could go very far w with you on that one, yes. Um, some people do know or they have an idea how they learn or how they want to learn. Maybe it's how they're used to learning. And sometimes it's very right for an educator to say, no, I'm not going that way with you. I'm going somewhere else and I do it all the time. Because um, some people are, part of education is to take you out of your comfort zone into a new place so that you can experience new things and learn and grow through that. So sometimes the educator does know, but he always has a theory about who he's talking to. Where is he and where does he need to go? So that's what I mean. But learning is increasingly becoming a way of building self-confidence. Is that fair, do you think? Okay, yes, yes, yes. And, and a lot of people do need that. Is it, a, in a sense, a substitute then for parenting, either from mothers and fathers or perhaps from the state, as you have the breakdown of other structures of authority? Are we looking to schools and universities to provide that kind of authority? I don't know. That's <laughs> um, maybe more and more people realize that they're developing, they're growing, they're changing through life. In your American culture, everybody has a shrink mm. and or a lifestyle guru, <laughs> um, and they're learning there. 
with, with somebody guiding the way in some way or another. Um, education, some people use education as a way to develop in that way. Back in the 60s we had a lot of research on who are these adult learners? Why do people learn? And, and so they, they tried to classify the different types of why people would go, you know, spend their evenings to learn something. And then one of the results, one of the research showed, you know, they want companionship, they want friendship, they want people to talk to, or they want, they're going somewhere, they need a, a diploma to be able to drive a lorry. So, so they, they want to be able to do something with the, the education. And the others just love learning. How do you learn best? Um, by taking risks, by trying stuff. Um, I like to, when I'm trying to advance myself, I, 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 I kind of jump in the deep end. It has to be frightening, it has to be difficult and then scary. Like a horror film? Not, no, not that bad, but, but you know, really challenging. So you can cope with failure? Yeah. I, I and you think the principal challenge of educationalists now is teaching people to cope with failure? Oh, well, um, we've been talking about this today. Um, I hope this doesn't become a kind of cliché. It's okay to learn to cope with failure, but I think there's a lot of research which also shows that we really learn from success. So um, if, if I do something right, I'll try it again and again and again. We could, we could, nearly all the learning theories support that. But um, when we're trying to learn something new, we have to have a safe place where you can try it out. And if the working environment is, and your attitude is such that it's, I mean, you know, I am not a failure even though I do sometimes fail, that's okay. But I, 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 I'm not, uh, I was a bit troubled by this blind faith of, of teaching people to fail.